Good morning and welcome to Evangel Wichita Online. We're so glad you decided to come and have some church with us this morning. If you would like more information about us, we would love to connect with you on our website, evangelwichita.org slash connect. If you would like prayer with us, you can also fill out that form there. While you're on the website, make sure you take advantage of our online giving. Uh, it's a great opportunity to continue to be faithful to God through our finances because ministries are still happening here at the church. Make sure you check out our Activate Kids Facebook page because not only on Sunday mornings, but all throughout the week, Pastor Jeff is putting up incredible content for our kids. Then the youth ministry, Remedy, has stuff on Wednesday nights, Sunday nights, and even devotionals throughout the week. You want to make sure you check that out. And then we have Bible studies that are happening throughout the week as well online. So you can find information on all of those on our website. Yes, and this morning we're going to be partaking in communion as a church body. So if you'd like to prepare your house with a little drink and a little something to eat, we would love to do it with you. And it doesn't matter if you have crackers and grape juice or you have goldfish and orange juice or sweet tea and whatever. Hey, use what you got. Use what you got. <laughs> and we'll be having communion during the message this morning. And now, as we get ready to worship together, can you join us in prayer? It doesn't matter if you're sitting in the living room with your family or if you're watching this on your phone. We just want to worship God together. It doesn't matter that we're not in the same place. God is glorified and His presence inhabits the praises of His people. So let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you so much. God, thank you that we could come together as a church family and glorify your name. Father, I want your name to be glorified above every other name today through our worship, through studying the word, even through communion. God, be honored and glorified and pleased with your children today as we worship you. So God, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So stand up right where you're at, join us in worship, sing out loud, and let's have some church.
Jesus, your presence is the comfort of my soul. There's no I'm 
each and every person who hears your word, God, that it softens their heart, that they can look more like you each day. Lord, that they would take what they learn in this service, God, and that they would put it into practice. Jesus, we look to you today. We know that you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. Jesus, I pray right now that you would just build faith. God, that you would make yourself known to each person who is hearing this today be with the sermon, God. Speak through your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, what a powerful time in worship. There is no place that I'd rather be than with Jesus. And I hope that as you are joining with your family or watching by yourself or wherever you are today, you are sensing the presence of the Holy Spirit around you and that even in these moments worshiping together that We are just saying, God, we want to be with you today, that you would speak to our hearts and our lives, even today. Let's take a moment. Let's pray and just seek that. Lord, today we just want to be with you. So God, just come wherever people are watching, wherever they are right now. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just wrap yourself around them, cover them, help them and keep them. Thank you, Lord. We want to be with you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. What an exciting day as we enter into the Easter season. Um, I'll read Matthew chapter 21 to you. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted as Jesus is coming into Jerusalem riding a donkey. They, They are shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They're quoting Psalms. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Palm Sunday, the day where we recognize and worship the Lord. We are in our series called Finished here at Evangel. And over the last several weeks, we've been looking unto Jesus together. Looking unto Jesus together. Why? Because we're answering the question, what should we do? How should we respond when we have a bad day? How should we respond as people? How should we respond as a church when we go through hard times, when we face difficult situations? How should we respond? What should we do? Is there, are there things we should do? Because I asked the question, have you ever had a bad day? And we all said, yes, Mark, we've had bad days. We have those times that are tough, the difficult situations. And when you're in the middle of a bad day, it never seems like it's going to end, does it? And it's very difficult to see the other side. So we are taking some time in this Easter season looking at a day that from all other accounts would be called a bad day, but it's a day in the life of Jesus that we call Good Friday. We call Good Friday. I mean, if you just think about what Jesus went through on this Friday, all the things that he faced the lies, the betrayal, the, the torment, the, the, the court system, the brutal beatings, the angry leaders, you would say, Mark, Jesus had a bad day. But this is a day we call Good Friday. And I get it. I understand. This is, there is no comparison to what Jesus went through and, how, and, and to our bad days today. I get it. But our natural response to those days and when they're tough, when they're difficult, if we're honest, is to just throw a tantrum, maybe scream a little bit, and quit. So I thought about this. What framework, sh- framework should there be for us to handle these bad days? What does Scripture say about how we should walk through bad days? And by looking at Good Friday and how Jesus navigated this day, we can learn some things. But let's start with our key verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I want to read this to you. These are powerful verses. I've been reading to you every week, but look, look, look. Verse one, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Look, here's the key. Verse two, fixing our eyes on Jesus, 
Do you want to know how to make it through to navigate the hard days? Keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm going to read verse two again in the message paraphrase. Powerful. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. Study how he did it. Watch Jesus. So today we are going to continue looking at seven statements that Jesus makes while he's on the cross on this Good Friday. And in these statements that Jesus makes on the cross, we see him unfold secrets to triumphing over hardship. We are going to look unto Jesus together. We are going to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus today because that's where we can learn how to handle our bad days and how to finish well. So we're learning principles every week on how to navigate hard times, how to finish well. Here's the principles we've learned so far. First, we said to navigate well through hard times, we need to learn to forgive everyone. We next looked at we need to learn to help others. Third thing we learned, the principle, was we need to take care of those near us. Fourth, we said we need to aim hard questions at God. And last week we talked about that we need to learn to acknowledge our need. We need to be human enough to acknowledge that we actually have a need. So ask yourself, how are you, how have you been doing? How how's the checklist going? Have you been putting these into practice in your own life? So let's look at our next principle today. Finishing, looking unto Jesus. Let's look at his next statement. John chapter 19, verse 30. Here's the statement of Jesus. When he had received the drink, remember we looked at that statement last week. Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What a powerful statement. Jesus makes this statement. Three words, it is finished. The Greek word there means it is accomplished. It is finished. The Greek word there, it is accomplished. Now listen to me. I want you to be assured of something today. This is very important. I want you to understand this today. There is always a purpose and there is always an end. Did you get that? There is always a purpose And there is always an end. What do you mean, Mark? What what are you talking about? Let me explain this a little bit more to you. There is always a purpose. There is always an end. Listen, it may not seem like it when you are in the middle of a bad day. Just look around at what we're dealing with today. The situations that are happening all around us. This is even more applicable to us today. Everything changes every hour, it seems. Every minute there's something new. We have changes happening all around us to how we're doing life and new terms being thrown at us, new restrictions, different things. So it's very easy that when you find yourself in the middle of a bad day, you cannot understand a purpose. And, and it's very hard to conceive the end. You don't understand the purpose and you cannot conceive the end. But listen, I want you to get this today. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, no struggle that we ever face will, will be pointless. Did you get that? No struggle that we face will ever again be pointless. There is always a purpose. And listen, no suffering that we endure will ever again be unending. Because of what Jesus has done, there will always be an end. You may need to write that down today. There is always a purpose and there will be an end. Look at look with me in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. We read the end, right? It says, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Look at verse five. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. 
Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Verse 7, those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. God's ultimate deliverance is our promised inheritance. Now, I know today that God's sovereign power will ultimately win in the end. There is a purpose and there is an end. This is true today. This is true today. We can count on this. But let me pause and caution you just for a moment. There is a warning in this as well. In the middle of a bad day, in the middle of your difficult situation, do not expect to be able to read or completely understand the full dimensions of God's plan. Don't be alarmed when you cannot. In fact, most people don't see it. There, there may even be people around you that share with you about how bad this situation you're in really is. They may even question God around you. You see, most people never really know the full extent of what God is doing. Think about this day we call Good Friday. While Jesus is on the cross, Jesus is there on the cross. We would look at that scene of Jesus on the cross and say, it's, it, it's bad. It's done. He's on the cross. There's no coming back from what is going on right now. He is hanging on a cross. In fact, the disciples are in the same situation. They are, they are confused. They are running. They're scared. But the truth is, we know today, through the work of the cross, we can find help in our suffering. And it's through the suffering of Jesus that we find true relief from bad, the bad days that we face. Look with me at how Paul states this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. He says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who's hung on a tree. So on this Good Friday that we are talking about, and through the cross, Jesus faced five different types of suffering and they all have very serious implications and very important implications for our lives today. Scourging, crown of thorns, nails, spear in his side, and ultimately death. And each part of the suffering that Jesus went through specifically deals with a problem that you and I face every day in our life. In fact, let me show you the prophet Isaiah writing years and years and years before Jesus was even born in Isaiah 53, 5, writing these words about Jesus. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So today I want to look at each of these different types of suffering, the suffering that Jesus endured. And I want to examine a little bit closer what they mean for us today. The implications are huge. And I want to show you not only the suffering that Jesus went through, but the result of each of them and how they can be applied to your life today. There is a purpose and there is an end. So let's talk about them today. First, let's look at the scourging that Jesus went through. Breakthrough in your body because of this. Now, what does that exactly mean? I looked this word up, scourging, and, and scourging is a whip or lash, especially for the infliction of punishment or torture. You look at what Jesus endured and he faced something serious against his own body. He was beaten. Every lash was against disease. Every minute of the punishment was for you, it was for me. So what's the result? What, what, what's what happens because of it? What does it mean for me today, Mark? The result of the scourging that Jesus went through is healing. Healing. And I want you to understand something today. Jesus paid a high price. A high price. This is something huge for you today. Do not leave this benefit unopened. A high price. Do not neglect what this benefit means for you today. 
Let me read through scripture and show you how important this is for you. First, look at what David writes in Psalm 103. And I want you to pay attention to how David starts this psalm. He knows what the priority always is. Look at verse one. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, even in verse two, my soul and forget not all his benefits. Now watch these benefits. They are incredible. Verse three, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And he says, by his wounds, you have been healed. You've been healed. We've asked all of you today to gather communion elements at home. Whatever elements that you are able to gather to represent the the bread and the cup, that's great. It doesn't matter if it's grape juice and bread. Whatever you can find at home, whatever you can gather together with your family today, whatever you have, we're going to take what you have to represent the broken body of Jesus Here at Evangel, let me just let you know that if you're watching today, we do not practice closed communion. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you are welcome as you're watching this, wherever you are, to remember what Jesus has done for us. And we're going to do it a little bit different today. So I want you to take first what you have to represent the body of Christ. I have a little cracker, a little piece of bread in my hand. Let's stop and pause what this represents today. We read the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I talked about the first benefit of Jesus the beatings that he took, the scourging, the the pain that he went through, it was for your healing today. So as we hold this emblem in our hands that represents the broken body of Jesus, I am believing for your physical healing today. If you are in need of a physical healing, wherever you're watching right now, I'm gonna pray for you. I want you to, as you hold this element in your hand, just say, Jesus, I believe I look to you for my physical healing today, right where you are. I believe for my physical healing right now. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone watching, Lord, as we are pausing to remember what you have done for us, what your broken body means for us. And Lord, I pray right now for those watching that need physical healing. Lord, you know everyone right where they are. There are many that are dealing with physical needs in their body. I pray in the name of Jesus, for healing as we pause right now and remember why you went through the scourging that you went through. Thank you for the result, which is physical healing for us today through Jesus. Now would you take the bread and let's take it together and remember the broken body of Jesus today. I want to continue looking at these things that Jesus went through. Not only do you have healing today, but second, he dealt with a crown of thorns that was placed on his head. That represents a breakthrough in your mind. Let me read the account of what happened in Matthew chapter 27, verse 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They put a crown made of thorns on the head of Jesus. Now, there is debate through the years on what type of thorns these were. There's debate on how long 
these thorns actually were. Some say half inch long, others say up to two inches long. But the fact remains that there was a crown of thorns placed on top of Jesus' head. We read in Isaiah just a few moments ago, in Isaiah 53, that the punishment was put upon Jesus for our peace. So that's the result I want to talk to you about that comes through this crown of thorns and the breakthrough in your mind. Through this punishment, the result is you can know peace today. Wouldn't you say that in our world, peace is so desperately needed? More than ever, peace from worry, peace from confusion, peace from depression, peace from fear, peace from meaning direction in our life. God will give you peace in your mind today. It does not depend upon the circumstances around you. You do not have to wait for circumstances to change. God can give supernatural peace to you today. You may need to write that down too. God is ready to give you peace Today, look what Jesus says in John 14, 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, the reality is the world promises peace too, doesn't it? The world promises peace. Culture will promise you different ways to achieve peace. Through many different ways. Some good, some not so good. Some helpful, not so helpful. But the peace of Jesus is so much more, so much more. Look at what he says in John 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Here's what I want you to know today. Through Jesus, there is healing. Through what he went through, there is healing. Through Jesus, there is peace. Through what he went through on the cross, there is peace for you today. Look at, let's look at number three. The third thing that Jesus dealt with were the nails. The nails in his hands and in his feet. Breakthrough in your conscience. You see, they nailed Jesus to the cross to crucify him. Now, I want you to take a moment. Look at your hands. Take a look at your hands. Like Everyone has. We have, we have hands. Why are the hands so important? What do the hands represent? Well, your hands can represent the things that you do. If you look at your hands, if you work outside a lot, you will see the residue on your hands. You can see your hands a certain way. They may be rough or or calloused. If you're a musician and play guitar, you see calluses on your fingers. If you work in an office, you may have different types of hands. Your hands are involved in what you do. They represent what you do on the outside. That's why they've even become the focal point in battling the virus today, right? What do you hear over and over again? Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. So your hands represent what you do. And so even when you do something wrong, your hands can represent the guilt in what you have, what you've done. Body language experts even say that the wringing of the hands can show worry about something or even show that you're hiding guilt, feeling bad that you're wringing of the hands. Look at David writes in this amazing Psalm, Psalm 24. Verse three, he says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place. The one who has, look at this, clean hands and a pure heart. Now, clean hands represent the things that you do externally in your life. Your hands represent the things that you get involved in externally. A pure heart represents who you are on the inside. Who's that in the inside? So here's here's the result. Because of the nails, here is the result that you can experience today. You can experience freedom. Freedom from habitual sin. Freedom from everything that binds us today. You can experience freedom today. Freedom. It's amazing. I want to continue 
remembering what Jesus has done for us through taking the next element in our communion, the cup. What does it represent? Let's look again at Paul's words in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-five. 25. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So take the cup, whatever you have, to represent the blood of Jesus. Now here's the amazing part. This is a new agreement. There is freedom because of this. The new agreement that we have through Jesus. See, we had a broken relationship with God. Jesus came and because of what he did on the cross, the blood that was shed, we can have new life through Jesus. Freedom through Jesus. Maybe you're watching today and you need to experience the freedom that Jesus can bring. You need to just pause right now and say, Jesus, I accept your freedom. I accept your forgiveness. I accept what you've done for me on the cross right now. Before we go any further, I need that Jesus. You see, you can erase guilt and memory. Everything can be new. Freedom. You can start fresh right now. Let's take the cup together and drink and remember the new agreement that we have through Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> you see, there is healing today. There is peace today. And there is freedom today. Number four, I want to show you this next one. He dealt with the spear in his side, the spear, a ruptured heart. And that represents a breakthrough in your spirit. Let me just give you the account in John chapter 19. Look at verse 32. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus's side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. Now I started asking myself about this and I researched crucifixion a little bit more. And I'm not going to get into graphic with you, but I want to talk to you today about this a little bit more. But crucifixion typically resulted in death through one of two ways. <clears throat> the first way was hypo volemic shock. What that means, and I had to research it because I'm not a medical expert, the prolonged rapid heartbeat resulting from hypovolemic shock can cause fluid to gather in the area around the heart. This is called pericardial effusion. I looked it up. The second way death often occurred during crucifixion was due to asphyxiation. This simply means the person is unable to breathe in enough oxygen to survive. You see, crucifixion victims typically had to pull their weight up with their hands or wrists that were nailed to the crossbeam and push up with their feet and their ankles, which were also nailed, to try to get a breath. Over time, the ability to push up or to try to get a breath would end and the oxygen flow would be restricted. And this asphyxiation can also result in the buildup of fluid around the heart. In the case of Jesus, the soldier saw that he had become unconscious <clears throat> and like he was, likely was already dead. To confirm, a spear was shoved in his side, likely under his ribs, that ruptured the pericardial sac, resulting in a flow of both blood and water. So what about us today? What does this mean for, for you? What does it mean for me? Think of it this way. Your heart is crushed today, some of you, many of you, by the pain of life. Broken relationships have crushed your heart. Maybe a divorce has crushed your heart. Maybe it's a wayward child crushed your heart. 
family dynamics have crushed your heart. But I want to share with you the amazing result that comes from this spear in the side of Jesus today. Here's the result that you can know today, and that's joy. John tells us this in John 15, 11. Jesus, excuse, tells me this, tells us this. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. There is a joy for you today. Joy unspeakable. I mean, it's a joy that's uncomprehensible. Some of you are in the middle of a situation and you cannot comprehend a joy. But I'm here to tell you that through Jesus, there is a joy for you today. There is a joy for you today. You see, there is healing through Jesus. There is peace through Jesus. There is freedom through Jesus. There is joy through Jesus. Finally, number five, his death brings breakthrough in your future. This was his ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose of Jesus to welcome fallen humans back into fellowship with the Father. And let me share with you the amazing result of his death. And that's victory. Victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says this. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through. Look at this. Look at this. He gives victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is victory. Romans 6, 23, Paul writes these words, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There is victory. Listen, as I wrap this up today, there is a purpose and there is an end. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, hear me today, because of what Jesus did on the cross, no struggle we face will ever again be pointless. There is always a purpose. Listen, because of what Jesus did on the cross, no suffering we may endure will ever again be unending. There will be an end. Here's what it means. Through the cross, there is healing today. Through the cross, there is peace today. Through the cross, there is freedom today. Through the cross, there is joy today. Through the cross, there is victory today. When Jesus said, it is finished, that's how it all happened. Through Jesus, only Jesus. It's through the cross. It is finished. It is accomplished. You can know healing. You can know peace. You can know freedom. You can know joy. You can know victory today. So the question is this, have you responded to him today? Have you responded to him today? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for these truths and what happened in these three words, it is finished, it is accomplished. That Lord, through your suffering, we can know an end. That Lord, we can know your truth today. That there is a purpose, there is an end. There is a purpose, there is an end today. Thank you, Lord. While you're praying, where you're watching today, let me just ask you, first of all, I asked before, but do you need to make a commitment to Jesus? Do you need a relationship with him? You see, all these things that I've talked about, they're through, the, what, they're through what Jesus did on the cross for you. Through what he did on the cross for you. You can have new life today. You can have a fresh start today. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and he's done these things for you and you can have a new relationship with God today. So if you're watching 
today. You need to do that. This is your moment. He's calling out to you. He loves you. He loves you and he cares about you today. Make that commitment. Make that change today. The second thing, you're watching, you're praying with me today, you're dealing with a bad day, you, you are failing to see the purpose and you cannot see the end. I'm here to tell you, there is healing, there is peace, there is freedom, there is joy, there is victory. Do you need that reminder? Do you need that reminder this morning? That, do you need that reminder today? Do you need to know that today? If that's you, just say, God, I need that right now. I need that right now. I need that reminder right now. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to lives and people today. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for tuning in with us this week. We are so glad that you decided to join with us. If you made a decision for Jesus today, or if you need prayer for anything, we want to get in touch with you. So make sure you go to our website, evangelwichita.org slash connect and get in touch with us. And one of our staff will be reaching out to you today. Have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next time. For now, see you later.